Regulatory reporting. Regulatory reporting provides an essential trail to understand exactly what happened in organisations if something goes wrong. It is useful information for directors, clients and investors and in banking helps management to better map the progress of their bank. Faced now with increasing pressure by regulators to provide high quality data, many banks are already on a journey to more advanced regulatory reporting. It's an obligation that carries heavy penalties if not done properly. So today we're meeting with Regnology, the reporting technology provider. We're going to be speaking with Chief Revenue Officer Masiej Pichoki and to Senior Vice President Product Management Bodo Vendemola to understand how banks can navigate changing requirements and implement leading regulatory reporting practices. First of all, I'd like to ask you about um, when it comes to regulatory reporting, what's at stake if uh, a financial services company has a problem with that process? What are the biggest risks that they face and how do you help them address those risks? Well, let's go back to the September 2008 with uh, the bankruptcy of Lehman. Uh, you know, literally 10,000 of people lost their jobs. The bankruptcy of many financial institutions uh, cost billions of dollars. Taxpayers were involved. And interestingly, what followed was what we called a regulatory tsunami. Uh, not only central banks and supervisor authorities, but also the multinational authorities like the Basel Committee across the world realized that they have exposed economies, they have exposed taxpayers, and indeed, they have exposed financial institutions themselves uh, to very, very high risks. And the realization which followed after that was that they need data to make much more informed decisions, especially if you remember what happened to Lehman Brothers and what followed with the AAG bailout was a nice proof of that. What also followed, especially in the recent few years, regulators started to apply quite a heavy penalties for non-compliance with regulatory reporting. At Regnology, we are really at the forefront of these developments and, and regulations. So our vision is to connect regulators and the regulated entities and financial institutions. And we do this uh, being a global platform that plays and transfer the data before, between the regulated and the regulators. And we believe those that we are contributing to financial transparency and stability is digital transformation then having a huge impact on the compliance and regulatory reporting agenda and the processes involved in that? It sounds like it is. It is, and it is coming from actually two, two angles or two, two directions. It's coming from within the bank, but it's coming also from the regulators outside. So within the bank, we all know that digitalization is a key topic for the banks. And that means we see more composable architectures in finance and risk architectures. We see more uh, data and AI driven intelligence and we see more automation and that truly affects regulatory reporting. We also see opportunities coming out of that in, in the rec reporting because we can see a, a trend for more standardization. We see more automation. And when, when we look at these technologies like cloud and AI, these of, also often offer um, benefits for the way regulatory reporting is being done. Um, how we can create, for instance, machine readable regulation and machine executable regulation to automate various aspects of rec reporting. And notably the FCA, for instance, is here, is, is here doing a lot of work. From a cost perspective, uh, because obviously the regulatory reporting process incurs a cost for financial institutions, how or why has that changed from a variable cost to a fixed cost? And how can banks mitigate some of the cost of that process? Yeah, I think that the keys to reduce costs for the banking industry is in three ways. First of all, it's standardization of processes, of data formats, of interfaces. 
And then it's modernization, especially of the IT, to have a more elastic infrastructure. And then lastly, when you have achieved that, you can start to further automate. And on top of that, you can also think about how to mutualize costs through better sourcing. A lot of what we are discussing is unburdening the compliance and regulatory reporting functions so the banks can invest more in the client-facing activities and digital apps in their go-to markets. So we have the so-called run journey, and we believe that there is a great potential to unburden banks in the run the bank for regulatory reporting, and we will be discussing surely about how outsourcing can help there. But there's a big topic, how to unburden the banks on the second journey, which is change the bank. And if you see how many regulatory changes are coming every year, this is something which a lot of financial institutions are having a really large problem with. And this is another dimension, how you can look at the run the bank and change the bank in the context of regulatory reporting. And big part of our value proposition is a quite a massive unburdening of financial institutions through these two journeys. In certain scenarios, you can think how what is the most efficient response to regulatory change. And this is something where we believe we can provide quite massive efficiencies instead of financial institutions doing them themselves. You've touched on the next uh, subject already, but with um, regulatory compliance and with the regulatory reporting function, are those things that are best retained in-house or are they best handed over to a specialist provider of outsourced services? Well, think about automotive industry. What happened to the automotive industry in the last three decades? Uh, massive standardization, massive industrialization. It had impact on what car manufacturers actually retain in-house as core capability and what they outsource to specialist external providers. The results of this, you know, we know this from Japanese, German, American car manufacturers were massive efficiency gains. Now, think about cost pressure and the margin pressure that the banks are having these days and think about their supply chain. Sometimes we are calling this regulatory value chain. So while in early 2000 it was possible to order a car and immediately start producing a tire on the different continent of this world, if today a regulator has a request for a new data point or a new data report, it usually takes a few months, if not a few years, till the financial institution is able to provide this data to the regulator. And think about this. I mean, in automotive industry, we're having to do with physical goods. We are talking here actually about digital, digital data. So actually, it should be much, much simpler. And we believe at Regnology, because we are so obsessed with standardization, industrialization, we can take care of mutualization of the cost in a bit similar way what happened to the automotive industry. And we can make the exchange of data between banks and regulators way, way, way more efficient. There is no competitive advantage in regulatory reporting, especially as we see that uh, the regulators are looking and enforcing that every bank applies the same rules, the same logic, and there is less and less room for outcome control in regulatory reporting. And so there, I don't see any objections why this should not be outsourced. How does something like, say, cloud-based solutions feed into making the regulatory reporting process more efficient, more cost efficient and uh, more compliant? When you look at the typical bank doing rec reporting, we see that there are a lot of peaks in demand of computing time. So there are, is data coming in and there is a lot of reporting happening around the month's ends and there is a high demand on computing time. And then uh, on certain other days, there is a very low demand of computing time and, and cloud and hyperscalers really offer better pricing models to deal with these peaks in demands and that can bring uh, costs uh, down. We already have over a thousand firms on our private cloud which is uh, fulfilling all the uh, requirements of the European, uh, but also the local uh, regulators. And it's also benefiting already from this mutualization effect that we were discussing before. 
And that's something where we believe in combination of the depth of the solution, which if you really want to get unburdened as financial institutions, you have to have a deep integration back to granular data. And this where with our standard granular data model, we provide quite large benefits there. This combined with cloud technologies can really get significant costs off the shoulders of the bank and mutualization that we are providing there. Is the regulatory reporting process an area in which banks can perhaps drive innovation in a way? For a new data request from the whole industry defining the which it would take probably a year or two. And we said, what needs to happen for such a process to be run within a single sprint of a week? So today, the approaches are more pushing the data over reports into the regulator. We have redesigned the system saying the regulator is able to pull the data. There is a couple of prerequisites which we were discussing already earlier, which are having mainly to do with standardization and industrialization. And we see a great appetite for regulators following this regops and the pull approach. And this indeed have a quite impact on the way how banks are dealing with data, especially with granular data, because if your regulator is able to pull the data at any time, and scrutinize you on this, you are approaching the topics of data governance, of data handling in a very different way, which indeed drives quite a chunk of innovation. So, interesting. Regnology even looking to change the model. Regulators being able to now pull data out of the financial system rather than having banks provide data to the regulator. Now that is innovation.